Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's just pray and then we'll start. Father, we, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for the wisdom that we have in your word. And we thank you for the opportunity to um, to to be able to read, to be able to understand. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom that you bring into our lives, Lord, because you are the spirit of wisdom. You are the spirit of revelation. Lord, we thank you that we have you as our God and uh, that you live in us and you abide with us forever, God. We thank you, Master, and we pray that... Um, that you will teach us, Lord, even as we spend this time in your presence. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, last session was about time, right? Uh, we looked at the resource, which is time, and uh, how, uh, how to manage time, how to make the best use of this resource. So... Um, any, uh, so I hope you were able to apply that. You know, uh, we looked at listening, effective listening, and uh, you know, I've been trying to apply that. Uh, I think um, in uh, in a recent conversation, I found myself, you know, finishing the last few sentences of the person who was talking, and then I realized, hey, uh, you know, this is not effective listening. So I had I was tempted to finish every last every last line, and you know I caught myself doing that, and uh, you know I could just uh, uh, I was uh, I was reminded of this, and um, so you know I, I apply that uh, listening listening technique or listening you know how to be a good listener like that, and um, so last class we looked at um, time and uh, how to manage time how to uh, manage time well and how time is a resource. And we looked at some of those practical things, right? Uh, especially when it comes to prioritizing, we, we saw that we can uh, look at any task or activity um, and see, you know, is it important? Is it urgent? You know, that grid, if you remember, uh, we looked at that grid. And if it's important and urgent, then we will do that first and so on, you know, so helping in prioritizing things. But first of all, I know we also need to know uh, what are those tasks and uh, to be able to list down those tasks uh, would help us to prioritize those tasks. And so we can, you know, go at it uh, one by one. Um, just wanted to mention that, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, listing down tasks, you know, we might have different areas of uh, responsibilities, you know, multiple areas rather, so, sorry, you know, you might, uh, uh, it's not just one thing that you are maybe in charge of or you're responsible for, you might have multiple areas. So in, um, in such instances, it helps to, you know, put uh, those in blocks. Right, um, the areas, and uh, this is also uh, a, a to-do list which was developed by I forget the name of the person, but um, uh, so he also uh, he developed that kind of a to-do list where you you know you write your key result areas, you know the key responsibilities um, that you you know that you need to impact. Uh, you know, for example, for me it could be you know like worship. Uh, you know, a responsibility as associate pastor of you know this location, and uh, maybe some you know as a Bible college teaching responsibility. So you know there are three areas already you know listed, and there could be other things like you know uh, marriage administration and some administrative things, or maybe correspondence, right? So each of these uh, you know categories, like each of these headings, you could we could have several tasks and uh, you know listing that uh, in such a manner helps us to kind of coordinate you know helps me to coordinate and see that i don't fall uh, off short in one of the areas right so that uh, it just ha helps me to be in sync and try to finish uh, you know all the areas try to be uh, aware okay these are the areas these are the tasks in each of these areas so something like that would help also okay um so um I just want to encourage us to apply what we are learning and try out what we are learning and uh, so that we can you know discuss about that as also okay so today we are going to look at uh, another resource uh, which is um, which god has given us which is what we think of normally when we when the term resource you know comes to our mind or when we see that 
word resource, which is which is material resource, which is money, right? Uh, so we're going to look at uh, some basics of management of uh, money. Okay, basics of management of money. But but before that, I just wanted to ask us, you know, about uh, uh, about our whole um, outlook on money because that's going to really impact our management of it. Okay, um, what do you think about money? Uh, that's going to uh, affect our decision about money. Okay, uh, and if our thinking about money is um, well, if it's going to be, uh, you know, what the world normally thinks about money, then of course our decision is going to be, um, you know, based on that. And uh, it it might be it might be helpful in some cases, not helpful in a lot of cases. Uh, so in a lot of scenarios, so it's it's good for us to uh, get an understanding or have a, a wholesome biblical outlook on money, even before we think of you know management of it, um, right? So uh, first of all, God is not against money. Okay. Uh, that is something that I think we looked at it in detail in our financial stewardship course. Um, so that God is not against money. He's not against prosperity. Okay, when we look at the word prosperity, it money is one part of it, right? Um, for example, uh, let's look at a couple of scriptures and then um, you know, and then we'll just dive right in. Okay, so let's look at uh, uh, the third episode of John, 3 John and verse 2. Uh, John, no, this is what he prays. Okay, He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So he's talking about you know, us thriving. Okay, he's, In fact, that's his prayer for the church. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. He's talking about you know, uh, our soul prospering, meaning our thoughts, our imaginations, our what we meditate on, you know, our thinking, everything that prospering, right? Uh, being successful, being th you know, thriving, um, and and then he also says, you know, that you may prosper in all things. Okay, in that you may prosper in all things, you know, which means all areas. Uh, and he also talks about physical health, you know, and, and be in health just as your soul prospers. So this is something that he prays for the church. So obviously it's in line with, uh, you know, with the word of God as he prays. So we, we, you know, we know that this is something that we can pray for our own lives and say that, you know, Lord, I pray that I'll be, uh, I may prosper in all things and be in health just as my soul prospers. And like I said, you know, prosperity meaning thriving, being successful in all all areas, right? And as our soul prospers, that's connected as our, our mind and what we put our mind to and what we think about, what we constantly think on, meditate on, our imaginations, our whole outlook on life. Right? Everything happens in the realm of the soul, right? our, our mind. So. Uh, to pray that, you know, Lord, let my my soul prosper. Let me thrive and be in health, and let it just be successful. Okay, that's a, uh, another scripture is one Timothy chapter six. Okay, um, let's turn there. One Timothy chapter six, and uh, verse seventeen. Okay, it's chapter one Timothy chapter six and verse seventeen. Um, so Paul is commanding Timothy and the church in Ephesus. He's saying, "Command those, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God." Okay, that's first part of the advice or command. Who gives richly all things to enjoy? Okay, so what is he saying? He's saying, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, not to be proud, not to trust in uncertain riches. So he's qualifying, you know, not to be proud, not to trust in riches because they have that quality of being uncertain. Okay, uh, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Okay, so you put your trust in the living God. And the last part is, 
interesting. He says, who gives us richly all things to enjoy? Okay. So it's the fine line. No, don't be proud because of material things. Don't put your trust because there are material things. Don't put your trust in material things. But you trust in God who richly doesn't hold back abundantly, gives us all things to enjoy. Okay, so you know that's um that's something that for us to internalize. And earlier on, you know, he says, love of money is the root of all evil, all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from their faith and their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So he's, there's a fine line between loving God, loving money, trusting God, trusting riches. But the thing is this, uh, what I want us to focus on is, uh, you know, the, the last part of 17, verse 17, which sometimes gets missed out because it talks about the character of God. It talks about what God's outlook is about a believer handling money, about a believer, you know, having money. Okay, it says, um, or receiving money. And it says, God richly gives us, he, you know, gives us richly all things to enjoy. Okay, so of course, God wants us to be good stewards of it. God wants us to enjoy it for ourselves. God wants us to be generous in helping others and so on. Okay, so, so have that in mind, have that outlook in mind, you know, when uh, when you're talking about money, that God is not against. In fact, the psalm is, uh, in the Psalms, it's written that he takes pleasure, who God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Prosperity meaning, you know, all things, right, including wealth and riches. And, uh, of course, we saw in the Old Testament, Old, Old Testament saints and how, you know, God prospered them, God blessed them uh, with all kinds of, you know, material things uh, also, right? So so God is not against prosperity. God is not uh, against money. And uh, and so we, as long as we understand where, where our heart is, you know, what are, uh, where do we put our trust? What do we love above all else? Okay. So that's the thing, right? So um, uh, just to understand, uh, uh, you know, there could be some hindrances to, uh, you know, to what God wants us to have, wants us to receive um, when it comes to money, when it comes to finances. Um, and, and the Bible talks about those hindrances. Um, you know, it could be wrong motivation. Okay, wrong motivation. You know, uh, like James, James chapter 4, the Lord, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, James writes and he says, you know, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. Okay, that you may spend it on your pleasures. You know, he's talking about lusting and not having, you know, coveting and not obtaining. And he's saying, you ask and you don't do it because you ask. Him. So wrong motive for, um, you know, even asking when it comes to, you know, uh, these finances. Wrong methods, which means that, uh, you know, you employ methods which are not righteous. Okay, God is righteous. God is holy. He leads us in righteousness. Uh, uh, Psalmist says, uh, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Talking about the good shepherd. Right? The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me in paths of righteousness. So he leads us in um, righteous ways. So the method of obtaining riches need to be righteous. Right? So if it's a wrong motivation, if it's a wrong method that hinders uh, you know, the, us from receiving what God actually has for us, maybe. And uh, it could be disobedience, disobedience in, with regard to finances. It could also be the opposition of the enemy because the Lord talks about how the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he has come to give us life and life in its fullness. The enemy comes to steal, the enemy comes to kill, the enemy comes to destroy. And Malachi talks about, Malachi 3, uh, when the Lord talks about giving and tithing, he's talking about how uh, the devourer comes to destroy. Right? The devourer comes to destroy. Okay, and he will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Okay, um, so 
so that could be one of one of uh, that could be another reason why there are hindrances when it comes to money or it could be lack of wisdom because we don't know you know that how to handle it some practical wisdom uh, you know we it could be lack of wisdom okay uh, or it could be effort also lack of effort right uh, proverbs 10 you know proverbs is full of such wisdom right it says uh, proverbs 10 and verse 4 he has a slack hand let me put that verse here um, proverbs 10 and uh, verse 4 okay uh, he who has a slack hand uh, becomes poor um, but he who is but the hand of the diligent makes rich meaning that one who is diligent, one who is, uh, you know, putting in effort and effort in the right direction um, with diligence, right? The hand of the diligence makes it so, which means there is, you know, if their effort put in is not, um, you know, it's not in the right manner, then that is also a hindrance. Um, but the fact is that, you know, wisdom, lack of wisdom sometimes, um, you know, is a, is a hindrance and also to what we have, uh, you know, we kind of squander it. Okay, we don't know what to do with it. We kind of squander it. Okay, so which is, which is really today's uh, topic, um, which is management of uh, this resource called money. So God is not against it. God is, you know, bringing it into your life. And so, how, what do I do with it? How do I steward it? Here are some, you know, practical skills um, that we can look at. Okay, so not all of us are born with this skill not all of us are culturally conditioned you know uh, for example if you were brought in a family brought up in a family where money was not money was rarely discussed okay it was not talked about it was considered a taboo to talk about money uh, so there was no wisdom uh, uh, or you know uh, in conversations from the elders from the heads of the family or or it was maybe information uh, about money careful that you should always you know hold on to it and and whatever you know um so we would have grown up and that would have been you know that may be part of our thinking part of our decisions when it comes to money okay. so uh, it helps for us to uh you know in whatever background that we have come with whatever uh, it, it, it can change like we can get information we can change and we can uh, change for the better when it comes we can get the skills required uh, when it comes to uh, money okay so some of us pride ourselves in uh, uh, in the fact that we can handle money really well okay whereas some of my some of us might say okay i don't know where it went Right. I don't know if you've ever had that kind of experience. I had this money in the beginning of the month. I had so much and I knew that I had to spend, but now I don't know where it went. Okay. So, uh, you know, whatever be the case, it helps us to manage, right? The Lord says, you know, be diligent to know the state of your work, state of your flock. Okay. Um, that's the wisdom that we see in, uh, in in Proverbs again. To know the state of your flock, meaning, you know, what is it? How much do we have? What is it that we uh, that we are uh, receiving, and so on. So the first thing is uh, when it comes to managing money, it's looking of budget. Okay. So what is a budget, and how do I budget? whatever is coming into my life and uh, you know what can i do okay so um, what is budget really budget is really a, a simple set of rules okay a plan rather just a plan to make sure that i live within whatever i'm getting live within my means and also don't spend beyond my means okay so it's a simple plan it's a simple plan which tracks down the flow of money. How much is coming into my life? How much am I, you know, either through uh, whatever whatever business I might be, um, you know, uh, having or employment, salary. Right. So what am 
and how am I spending it? Okay, so there is a it's a simple plan. Okay, so maybe some of you are doing it already, and you might uh, you might be able to you know even share a bit uh, you know your your own thoughts on what you're doing specifically to help um, you know budget well. Uh, so you might be doing that, right? So a budget is a simple plan. Okay, so how do I prepare, go about preparing a budget? Okay, so just want to know like how many of you do a monthly budget? Um, you know. Uh, is there something that you've uh, that you you know have you have written down somewhere? You know, this is a monthly budget. Anyone? Or you might say I have it in my mind here. Okay, I know. You know these are the expenses. These are the things that I need to take care of. Um, or what is that, Stephen? Excel means what? Oh, okay. You have a you have it on Excel sheet. Okay. Okay. Nice. I, so I, I thought Excel extra large budget. <laughs> okay, so okay, so Stephen does that. Okay, so it's good. It's good for us to. Uh, you have a notebook, Kiran. Good. Okay, so you know, many times we we might think, okay, the uh, I'm not making much money anyway, or you might say, you know, I'm 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 a student, so there's not much money, uh, you know, that I'm that I have anyway. You know, I just get. The, Little bit, and you know, whatever fees or uh, other stationery and other expenses, and so I don't, uh, I don't handle money, right? Um, so whatever you know, uh, place you are in right now, you could say, you know, I'm a student, or I'm, I'm, I'm a head of the family, or someone else manages the money. Okay, it's good for us to do this exercise. Okay, so. Um, so let's uh, let's look at uh, some of the s simple uh, ways by we can prepare about that you know, budget. You know, so the first thing is what is coming in, what is our income? Okay, so that is what it means, right? Income. So when we say income, we're talking about salary. We could be talking about contributions, right? We could be talking about uh, uh, you know maybe people are gifting something uh, to you, right? Uh, money, money that comes in is our income. Right. Um, sometimes it's uh, you know you have some fixed deposit and this uh, you know this interest that is generated because of it um, that is income as well. Right. So uh, so it, it helps to look look back and also look at uh, you know maybe if, if you want to track. I'm sorry, in, income is very you know it's it's easy, but it's also good to look you know. Where, where are the other sources of income, right? Is there some savings there, and is it that generating interest? Is there a fixed deposit, some, some you know, uh, somewhere where we have put some money, and uh, that is, you know, uh, that is being a source of income as well, right? Uh, and so you know, maybe you uh, you have a house that you have rented, uh, and uh, so the people are paying rent. No, that's an that's an income as well, right? So or maybe you are. You know, you bake stuff, you cook stuff, and you and you sell it. You know, you, you put it on WhatsApp group. You know, every weekend you're selling something, or maybe it's, it's just growing. You're baking things, you're selling regularly, and uh, it's it's resulting in some you know flow. Maybe you're um, taking some tuitions in your spare time. You're teaching children, and and. Okay, that's resulting in some generation of uh, money. Maybe you're giving some guitar classes, music lessons, uh, uh, keyboard lessons, and you know that is generating some income. So all these, you know, you think about it. So this is your income, you know, money coming in. So make a record of that. Okay, um, so make a record of that. Uh, what they normally say is that you do it for you know monthly. Uh, and then you do it for the entire year. You know, this is what comes in monthly, so therefore this is what comes in a year. Right? You spread up across twelve months. Okay. And of course, is expense. Okay. What do you spend your money on? Right. Now, it's better not to just think about it and write down. Of course, we we need to you know uh, think and uh, you know look at all those. Uh, you know, various sorry, various areas of spending, um, and we could also uh, divide that spending into fixed overhead. You know, like this month, this is something that has to be spent. It could be something like rent, 
electricity bill, water bill, right? These are fixed things. Maybe uh, someone comes and helps the house and you need to pay that person, right? So, so these are fixed things, school fees. These are fixed things, right? So uh, one way to do it is, of course, sit down and think and write, but also to look back if, uh, you know, if you're paying through your card, if you're paying, doing online transfers, um, or you, you know, use your Google Pay and, and do that, uh, Google Pay or Phone Pay or any of those apps to make payments, to look at a statement, okay, and see, um, you know, how much do I spend on these things? Uh, maybe first of firstly to look at what are the fixed spending okay fixed overheads fixed expenditures uh, where I stay in a house I need to pay rent I and that has some maintenance expenses towards you know maybe electricity bill water bill and somebody who comes to clean the you know the entire uh, housing complex and, uh, and that goes towards that maybe some electricity you know some payment towards the was the lift if there is an elevator in the house, uh, in the in the building, uh, and things like that, right? So look at that and put that down. You know, these these are fixed expenditures, and um, and this is a simple budget, right? So we are looking at that. We're not looking at increases and so on. We we could do that also, right? So those are fixed expenditures. And then the other thing is uh, non-fixed expenditures. Which could be, which could vary in a particular month. You know, this could be food, uh, this could be travel, this could be. When we say travel, you know, you're traveling out of town, uh, long distance, traveling for maybe it could be business-related travel, work-related travel, ministry-related travel, or it could be a commute. You know, you travel. Uh, I mean, you uh, you spend money commuting. Uh, you. You know, maybe you use an auto rickshaw, or you you have a two wheeler and you have to fill uh, petrol, and you go from your residence to the office, office and back, uh, and you know that is also your expense, right? So uh, these are non-fixed in the sense, uh, you know, for example, because of the pandemic, there's no the necessity to travel to the office, so you know that was not an expenditure, so. You know, for for the months that you don't go, so that's not there. So it's it's it varies. Food also, you know, maybe certain months um, there was a celebration, you know, birthdays in the families and something, some celebration get-togethers, and there was, you know, some things that were bought uh, in, and then, you know, maybe you were eating out, right? Uh, there was a celebration, you ordered food, or those are the uh, non-fixed. Uh, expenditure so you can make a list of that as well okay so we looked at income we looked at uh, fixed expenditure uh, non-fixed uh, expenditure so when we delete or when we subtract our uh, essential you know expenditure from our income okay so it could be fixed it could be non-fixed when we when we delete the expenditure from our income then we uh, then we are left with uh, the balance amount, which could be, you know, which could go into savings, or which could also, you know, what what is suggested uh, in some cases is that you could set it aside for uh, contingencies. Okay, so what do we mean by contingency? Contingency meaning uh, uh, a future event or a circumstance or an emergency or uh, or a, you know, it need not always be an emergency. It could be something that you're planning for. You know, you want to go on a holiday but you want to do that next year and maybe a certain amount of money can be set aside for that okay so so what is left right is it's what we call as discretionary spending amount okay um, so we set aside for contingency for emergency and then we have um, you know what is called as a discretionary spending amount okay now it's a simple budget. Let me just um, show. Um, um, yeah, I'll just uh, project this. You can take a look at it. Um, okay. Um, I hope you can see it. 
Not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, you can see that, right? Okay. Let me just go through. So it's a. Uh, I mean, it's it's all marked out in dollars, but um, you know, whatever your currency is, Indian rupees or whatever your currency is, you know, we can. So, you know, it talks about. Um, it lists down, right? Income, and uh, talks about. Uh, of course, you know, pays and taxes. Of course, we, we didn't look at that, right? Ta taxes, uh, which are deducted at source, or taxes that we might have to pay, and then the income, uh, you know, we uh, receive that. Then housing, you know, housing, food, um, you know, certain expenses like, um, you know, now what has become mandatory, right, are communication expenses when it comes to internet or phones. Uh, or maybe you know when it comes to entertainment, there's a cable TV at home. You know all those things. Okay, so it, it'll be good to list down. It'll be good exercise to list down and to see where the money goes. You know, even newspaper if you're buying newspaper and uh, and things like that. Okay, so food, housing, food. Um, okay, um, one second. Let me. Yeah, housing, food, transportation. Okay, so transportation, uh, maybe maintenance of the vehicles, right? When it comes to transportation, if you have your own vehicle, then there's vehicle insurance, then there's vehicle maintenance, uh, then there's fuel for the vehicle, right? Uh, and all those. Um, one other thing that I, uh, you know, I did not mention is loans, right? So those also are an expense. Okay, if you have uh, maybe a, a vehicle loan, uh, you know, you've, you've taken a loan and you've bought a vehicle on installment, then monthly there is an installment amount that uh, goes, right? Um, and also if there is a, maybe there's a house loan, you know, uh, or maybe there uh, money, there was money that was borrowed from someone and it needs to be, you know, a huge amount for whatever reason, maybe for education, whatever, and it needs to be paid back, and you're paying it back monthly, monthly, uh, like that, right? So that's an expense, and also health. And right? if there's, uh, you know, you you need to, you know, you take some medicines, you take some supplements, um, so that's, you know, that's something that you can list down. Um, and okay. Some of these may not be applicable, but then you know I'm just putting it down here. It's it's quite an exhaustive list, like uh, childcare, child support, uh, money sent to family, right? So that's something uh, also if you are earning and then you know the family is dependent on you, then obviously you spend some money back home. You know if you are uh, not living with your parents, you send some money back home for the family, for your brothers and sisters. Right, so that is there. We can, you know, make a list of that. Then, you know, bank loans, credit cards, um, other things. Right, and if you're a person uh, who's a student and you've taken a student loan, you know, these things are there: tuition fees, student loans, or even for children. Right. So this income versus expenses would give us what we, what money that we have left. In order to spend, so yeah, so this is pretty. Uh, I thought it looked uh, simple, and also it listed down. It looked exhaustive as well, right? So, um, so you could do this something like this. I'll I'll put the link uh, or I'll attach the PDF onto our stream, so you can take a look at it. And I'm sure that there are other like uh, what Stephen was saying. You know, you can just use a simple Excel sheet to. Uh, to enter this thing, and there are plenty of templates. Okay, um, templates meaning there are already set uh, uh, Excel sheets with all these kind of heads, and with space, so you can enter your own or make modifications. So there are uh, templates which you can download and use as well. So this will give us a uh, you know a firm grip on what is what we are. Um, uh, what our income is, what our spending is, and so we can plan um, our spending. Okay, and it's a good good exercise for us to do. Whether you know whatever stage of life we are in, you know, you might say, uh, yeah, "I'm not getting, you know, uh, I'm not getting much. I'm not earning right now." But it's good for us to you know try to you know do this exercise. Okay, um, and uh, so maybe you know we can 
you can try it out this week um, and and make a budget and see you know where is it that the money is going so the budget would help us in many ways it would help us to keep track of our spending okay and so is that hey this is something that i don't need it's like uh, you know you you're ordering out too much you know if he, you know now you have apps like swiggy and zomato on your phone food ordering apps and uh, you know maybe you've been spending you're just thinking okay it's only it's only 50 rupees it's only 100 rupees um maybe i can just you know add or order this but then you realize over a period of time or maybe at the end of the month because it's 50 100 and then you've been doing it very often and then you realize that hey uh, it is it is just grown to you know it's snowballed it has become a big amount right and you can you can you can make a decision you can make a choice okay maybe this i can cut down on okay i don't have to completely discard it but i can cut down on it right i can make it instead of making it every other day i can make it maybe once a week or you know it, it, this is something special some uh, you know and i can make it once a week or maybe you feel that it's unnecessary let me just cut down okay stephen says excel has inbuilt templates okay um okay so that's that's great so Steve, idea of which tab okay i can check it um i can check it also yeah so you can you can actually put it on the stream also you know um, like a screenshot or something that will also help okay so um so these are this is something so it helps us to plan ahead it helps us to curtail unnecessary expenses it helps us track um, you know where we are spending what we are you know spending on okay now um so it it helps us avoid debt okay so the thing is when you know that this is what uh is money coming in and uh, this is what uh, is going out then i you know i will think twice about my expenditure i will also think twice about borrowing from someone Okay, uh, borrowing. You know, it could the amount could vary, but if I know that this is what I'm, you know, what my income is, then I should not be actually borrowing. I should try to live within my means. You know, um, well, when it comes to borrowing, we might even think about loans, etc. And uh, well, loans are you know convenient. Right? If you let's say if you take a vehicle loan or something, you are you're actually paying a little more. Uh, sometimes a lot more than what the actual vehicle you know cost is right because there's uh, interest on that loan which you which you will be paying back uh, when you're paying the installments right um but the fact is uh, yes it is convenient but you can decide you know do i do I really want to do that okay can i can i afford to do that with this uh, current income okay not that god cannot you know, take you further and uh, and uh, in, may bring an increase in your life. You, know, you can, you know, we can definitely pray for that. You know, uh, God is not against that. Um, so we can pray for increase, pray for increase in all areas of our lives. Um, but this is just to let us know that okay, you can be aware of where your money is going. You can be aware, and based on that, you can, you and I, you know, we can make decisions, right? Decisions to spend, decisions to invest in also okay, we're not looking at that uh, here but uh, there are several options to invest okay, if there is an amount that is uh, left behind you know because um, you know many many times when we think of saving or investing we are thinking of thousands right uh, not even hundreds you think think of thousands saying okay if i had that i would invest if i had save uh, but really you know irrespective of amount you know can we think uh, saving okay um in what ways can you save is it like a you know savings account is it like a post office uh, kind of a you know simple way in which we can save or and when you're looking at investments you know what are the investment options you know we can get counsel from the experts right we can look at a uh, certain uh, you know wise counsel when it comes to you know financial investment and consider doing that 
if we have this amount of money, you know, which is in your hand, and you're saying, okay, we can invest it for the future. Okay. Um, some ex examples of financial success. Okay, let me just uh, put that down and uh, also look at uh, some other terms. Um, also, okay. First thing is that uh, you know we spend less than we earn. This is common knowledge, right? Which means we try to spend less than what we earn. Okay, so the expenditure you know has to be within uh, what our income is. Okay, so if you look at Proverbs twenty one and verse twenty, okay, um, let's just go there. Okay. Um, Proverbs 21, verse 20. Okay, it says, uh, There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. Okay, so squandering is uh, spending unwisely or extravagantly. We just, you know, you know, you know, you spend it off without thought. So that is squandering. Okay, so, um, so the thing is, you spend wisely, spend less than what you earn, uh, and uh, and you know then then we could see that there is that is left, right? Okay, so that's what problems. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. So which means that the wise person is not squandering. Okay, he's not spending unwisely. He's not squandering. That doesn't mean that we have to be miserly, stingy. Okay, uh, but this is just some practical wisdom. Okay. Spend less than what you earn. Okay, second one that we can look at um, is uh, avoid the use of debt. No, I'm saying avoid. Uh, be careful when it comes to debt or when it comes to borrowing. Okay, uh, Proverbs 22, the next chapter, Proverbs 22 and verse 7 says, The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender okay. so you know so certain times we cannot we know we cannot avoid so in that you know don't you're not saying completely rule out borrowing but do it wisely okay again think about the first one you know am i spending less than what i'm earning and uh, and then get into a debt kind of a purchase you know it could be like a loan it could be uh, even a credit card purchase be extremely careful you know, when it comes to these things. Okay, then uh, another thing is to save, invest, and build a, uh, when we say, uh, you know, saving or building liquidity. Okay, so we say liquidity, it refers to the fact that, you know, whatever uh, assets that I have, I can convert into cash okay, easily, okay. Or uh, the, the very fact that we have cash itself, okay. Uh, cash meaning money, uh, currency. Um, so liquidity. How do I build it? It's it could be through investments. It could be through saving. And uh, you know, this is because when you have liquid. If you are, you know, if you if you're building liquidity, then it's easier, easier to use it, easier to uh, for whatever needs that we might have. Right? Uh, Proverbs six. Um, okay, Proverbs six, verses six talks about um, providing for our needs. Right? Talks about the ant. Talks about the ant's ways. It says provides her supplies in summer. Verse eight provides her supplies in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Okay, saying going to the ant, you sluggard, consider ways, be wise. Having no captain, overseer, or ruler provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. So uh, you know, doing something about it. You know, when it comes to saving or investing, and you know, building. So uh, the other thing is to also set long-term goals. Now this verse might seem a little um, out of context. Now, Philippians three and verse fourteen. Um, let's look at that. Okay, Philippians um, three fourteen, where Paul says, "I press 
towards the goal for the rise of the upward cord of God in Christ Jesus. He talked about, you know, uh, look, having that goal and uh, doing whatever it takes to go towards that goal. Okay. Um, so even when it comes to uh, finances, when it comes to money, you we can have long-term goals um, and uh, just involve, you know, like we said, like we looked at other you know, like planning and etc. Involve God in the process. Um, God is not against planning. God is not against us planning for finances. So we can set long-term goals when it comes to maybe spending, maybe when it comes to saving, when it comes to investing. Okay, we can set long-term goals. And one last thing, uh, when it comes to financial success, these are some things to uh, keep in mind. This is last, but um, but really, this is this covers everything. Um, know that the Lord owns us and owns everything. Okay, so everything uh, belongs to Him. Really, it uh, completely it belongs to Him. Psalm twenty-four, verse one. You might have heard this over and over again. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Okay, so everything belongs to him. And another uh, scripture again talks about, you know, how the gold is his, the gold is mine, the silver is mine, says the Lord, uh, the cattle on a thousand hills and so on. So uh, it belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. And the Lord has given this to us to steward it, right? So if you look at it that way, you know, we will be, we will be careful. We will involve God in, in, our, uh, in our planning. Okay, so just wanted to say that uh, you know the the budget and uh, this understanding and this skill is not to restrict us in any way. It's not really to put a leash on us in any way. It's really to free us, right, and to involve God in the whole process because we know that uh, money is a reality. It's a very uh, uh, you know uh, it's a necessary. It's a necessity. And the Lord knows that we have need of material things. You know, the Lord Jesus says, right? When we read in Matthew chapter six, we see the Lord knows that you need of these things. So He knows that uh, it is a necessity, right? Uh, but the thing is not to fear, not to be anxious, but to be prepared, right? So planning is not sin. It's a, it's a, you know, money uh, planning for or planning to manage our resources well. This is one of the resources that God has put in our hands, uh, put in our uh, hands. So we plan and we manage it well and we use it well, right? Uh, for our own lives. And we also have enough to give others also. And that will come only when we manage it well. So uh, hopefully this will uh, help us. You know, we just looked at one thing, right? Budget. Uh, and for your personal study, you can even look at, you know, saving, you can look at investing, uh, you know, um, how can I do that? This involve the Lord in the process and uh, he might lead, he might, uh, you know, lead in ways that you never thought possible. And, uh, you know, maybe to start a business, uh, maybe to, you know, do things, you know, uh, I don't know if you have that in mind, but, you know, God will uh, lead you along those paths also, right? Okay, so we'll stop here and uh, we'll meet again next week. We are going to look at another resource, which is people, okay? Um, and how to, uh, we also already looked at communication, listening, etc. But this, this is in a more in a professional context. What do we do with this resource? You know, with people, because ministry is about people, we cannot... Uh, you know, uh, do away with people. People are going to be part of your life. Um, so professionally, how do we, you know, uh, when it comes to people, when it comes to the work that you're doing, what are some things, what are some skills that we can uh, we can pick up so that we can employ, right? Okay, thank you. God bless. Uh, we'll catch up again next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor.